Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. I'm Saba Hamidi with Mashable, and um, I'm going to bring up Adam Brody, Eddie Gathegi, and Amara Marrera. It was good, right? Yeah. Now you guys have to go home and watch all of it. <laughs> um, so I guess I wanted to start off with you guys asking um, what drew each of you to the show, and Adam, what made you also want to be a producer on it? Um, that's funny. Um, I'll be very candid with you about that. <laughs> um, um, first of all, thank you for all coming and watching it. That's, that makes me feel good and all of us. Um, um, I, uh, uh, well, first of all, I mean, as these things go, you know, they, they, your agents call you and tell you some information before you get to read it even. Mm -hmm. And, um, and um, I, I remember getting the call <laughs> and I had two agents on the phone. My, you know, I have my one guy and then this, uh, this other woman and those are my main people. Anyways, they'll patch you in and sometimes they're still talking while their assistant pats you in and they don't know that you're on yet. And I heard my one agent going, why wouldn't he do it? <laughs> <laughs> and not knowing I was on the phone yet. And I was like, oh, this sounds good. <laughs> and, um, um, and then, yeah, and then they're like, so Martin Freeman's in it? I was like, all right, so uh, um, I'll do it, but tell me more. And, um, and uh, yeah, and then I read it, uh, uh, having pretty much already agreed to do it. And it was art shooting in Puerto Rico, which, uh, you know, I hate to sound so pragmatic about it. I mean, I was inspired later, but just as an opportunity, um, even on paper, uh, it was already awesome. But, um, but I read it and I love, you know, I mean, the energy in the world. I mean, it's a unique world to me. It's, uh, it's uh, and Ben... Kitai, it's funny, but I wish you could read the scripts because it's so unique. I've never seen anything like it. It's sort of rule breaky in that he there's so there's more description than you've ever. I mean, he's, they're novels. You know, he writes novels, and in between each line, he's writing like a huge inner monologue. And you know, you could love it or hate it, but it's definitely unique and it's definitely interesting. And it, it is as unique and as um, adrenaline fueled a voice as the way he directed it, which is also, I, I think, very unique. I think it's got a very, I mean, obviously he's pulling from a lot of cool movies and he's got a lot of great influences, but I think in terms of stuff on television at the very least, um, this has a very unique feel. And um, so yeah, so his voice I just thought was, was different and for me a cool opportunity to be involved in that world. And the last thing I'll say, sorry, I'm just long winded, uh, producer part, um, this, to be perfectly honest, this came, this role came to me, um, pretty late. I mean, we were going to shoot in, you know, three weeks. And, um, so, I mean, obviously I didn't put this mo this thing together. Um, and my agent's like, we got you, you know, pre you know, they just, you know, it's like a bit of a, um, what's the word? Um, A-list or shit, exactly. As you say yes. Um, <laughs> And, um, and I was like, look, I don't, don't, you know, you don't got to get me, they don't got to give me a, pr that's stupid, because I'm not producing it, let's be realistic, I don't need it, it's fine. He's like, trust me, don't be an idiot, take it. I'm like, all right, I'll take it. And then I got on set, and I was like, I like this, people are calling me a producer, <laughs> like, this is really great, this feels good, I did ah, produce now, this. Now I don't have, should I not put that in articles about yeah. the show? <laughs> no, no, I mean, it's great, and so, so it was sort of a running gag, and I, I prefaced most sentences by, as a producer, <laughs> you know. and so it was, it was lovely. Produce something. You 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 got us better trailers. That's right. It's right. I got us. I got <laughs> us. I got trailers. us all an upgrade. For us. <laughs> they were. Listen. It wasn't some prima. I was like, guys. I'm just talking about average. Just better give us catering. average. Better catering. Again, my, you're a full fledged producer. My, but the see, the only thing I was asking for was average. I was like, let's do average food and average trailers. I don't need any better than that. But these things are crazy. Uh, uh, we had like crazy like trailers at first that were moldy and you know. Like you don't want to, you don't want to spend any time. Anyways. I did. I was like, yes. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah, you're. Oh. <laughs> it feels so weird speaking with the microphone, and we're all like right here. Uh, as far as me, what drew me to the role? I mean, she's Cuban and she's from Miami. I'm Cuban and I'm from Miami, so it was already a win. And the fact that she's a woman in tech. Um, I had read a Fast Company article about 
these girls in New York starting their own um, tech club in high school. And, you know, it's such a little league of women in Silicon Valley. So I think that was great that they made her a woman. Yeah, I think it's pretty badass. Yeah. Like, and, she, uh, and she's like the first... You know, when you, she's so smart, you know, even from the beginning, you know, she's trying to, she was really believes in the, right. well, you all, That's another all your thing. characters she do, was but smart. She, yeah. she didn't care about all the superficial stuff. I think that was great. I mean, for my first lead role, I think I couldn't have asked for something better. The script was amazing. And then they said, Adam Brody, Eddie Gazeggi, and Martin Freeman. I'm like, what the f Like this, <laughs> this is, it's not real, but it was. Take it away, brother. I'm going to echo a couple of things that you said, um, Martin Freeman. You know, when Martin Freeman signed on to do this, it's like, why wouldn't I do it, you know? Why wouldn't I do it? Crackle must be doing something right over there, because nobody really heard of Crackle. Do you, how many people know what Crackle is? You guys are in the industry. A lot of people <laughs> don't really know what Crackle is, but I think they're making a play to become more relevant now. Uh, and, and they produced this, which I think uh, we're really proud of it. Crim criminals. Riding in cars, loading weapons. <laughs> <laughs> Alternative title. <laughs> uh, and when I read the script, I was just um, fascinated by a story being told through four points of view, four protagonists, and each character was completely complex. They all had major demons, and I thought that was fascinating. That could pro provide for a very riveting hour of television having four protagonists. And my character's introduction was written as a wonder and we shot it as a wonder. And I thought that was a very bold choice to make for a TV show. And I wanted to be a part of something that was gonna attempt to be gritty, almost cinematic in a television program. Um, so I kind of had faith in, in what they were attempting. And what Adam said about the writing, the writing was extraordinary. It was like reading a novel. <clears throat> the only issue that I had was it felt as if the writer was kind of in love with the Ronald character because he was described as, you know, rippling biceps, huge your, your, shoulders. Your, your pecs are hypnotizing me right now. That is a very low cut. Can't walk through the door, <laughs> right? And I'm like, well, I'm never gonna be able to pull that off. So most of what I'm doing up there is like trying to be that guy. <laughs> I mean, I think it's true. It's it's not rare but you you don't always watch a show and like want to know about each character but when you watch this you're like oh i want to know everything about each of these people and you'll you'll find out more stuff if you keep watching but like especially even episode one when they're setting it all up and you're just like wait i don't you know i want to know <laughs> why you know why is uh you know why are they running away from this and that um but what kind of research did you guys do to prepare for like each role i mean it's they're all so different um did you like look into finance, you know, or tech, like what was kind of the process of research? Well, it was, um, this thing was uh, run and run and gun. I've never said that in my life, but I'm just going to say it. I don't, <laughs> anyways, it was, um, it was a, you know, it, this really, came, I mean, I think they were working on it, they, Crackle, yeah. Ben, for a while, but this came to all of us late. And, um, you know, we were on a plane and they were writing all the episodes and we were shooting them out of order as they're writing them all. So, I mean, it was a scramble. So, honestly, we did all read, you know, they gave us a binder of some Bitcoin articles that we all boned up on. But um, it was more like less like the same article over and over again. But, but, um, sorry, that's journalism. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, um, but it was just a, actually it was a constant process. I mean, you know, I mean, look, I'd be lying if I said the majority of what we talked about was cryptocurrency, but just even the characters. I mean, this thing was, um, I mean, it, you're always figuring it out on the day, but particularly this one, not every, you know, we're filming something from episode 10 and we haven't shot episode six yet and uh, yeah. things are changing. And so it was constantly with every scene, all checking in and going, where are we? Where were we coming from? Ben, where are we going? What about this? What about this? What about this? And, um, and some shoved in reshoots in the middle of it, you know, uh, uh, as well to kind of fix things as they, as you realized, you know, this new things would occur. So um, this was a scramble, but it was, it was really, it's fun and it's exciting and you're making huge choices every day, which is, which is really fun. Right. We also had, um, we were in contact with Brian, how do I say his last name? Stuck, Stucker? Brian Stricker, 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 Stricker. Uh, 
we were in contact with him and he works in Silicon Valley. And so he would give us like the real insight, certain scenarios and just kind of break it, really break it down so that you at least feel like you know what you're talking about. And then, um, <laughs> don't want to say you're in lie, but um, also worked with this um, one guy that I can't remember his name, God forgive me, but he was a coder in Puerto Rico and he worked with a university there and he would like go to this local Starbucks with me and we would kind of just code and, and we would like do like simple stuff. Like I can change the header on a website or the font cool. or the color, you know. So. <laughs> you know? No, I was laughing because I'm remembering when I did my first, I did a, a medical show. <laughs> and uh, I, I tried to put myself through make, makeshift medical school. So I bought all the books and I talked to doctors and I did all that shit. And I show up and none of the actors know what the <laughs> fuck they're talking about, but they're making the audience believe that. So for this, we got that binder, that cryptocurrency binder, and I went, and I'm just gonna say like I know what I'm talking about. You know, you know what? It looks like you guys know what you're talking about when you're acting. So. As long as you're talking about something, yeah. in here you know what I mean it doesn't have to actually be the real thing as long as you're believing something you're projecting some some form of truth it's make believe at the end of the day you're just given circumstances you're saying something right. that you believe in and you're conveying that to the audience I think um, it was believable though because I did get a message from this thing called Indicoin and they want me to invest <laughs> Yeah, I was telling Eddie yesterday, I said that um, I would not be able to explain John Coin <laughs> like in an article. I wouldn't be, I'd be like, Bitcoin like yeah. product. I learned a bit more after the fact, actually, <laughs> since we've shot it, I, a couple podcasts. And... Well, explain it then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, the main, the main, I've, I've, you know, the, the, the main thing I've sort of is, I think is interesting is the decentralization and the sort of democratic way I'm a Luddite, so I don't totally understand computers at all. But like the democratic way how with Bitcoin somebody invented and it was like, here you guys go, um, I'm going away. If you want to change, you guys all keep it running. And if you want to change it, just democratically do that. And I don't even understand. I can't wrap my head around how. So it's like, but it needs all this power to run. So there's these people that set up server farms. So they'll go, well, I'm gonna have a whole garage in China because the electricity's cheap and, and, and um, the software and I'm gonna set up this floor of stuff and I, I'll, I'll generate by helping generate the, the hardware um, for, to, to run this currency that I get, I generate my own, I get some free Bitcoins out of it. So that's how these people make their money. Some of them make their money, but then now they need some upgrades. I'm talking about Bitcoin, and this is all one planet money, 15 minute podcast. And, um, and, and now it needs some upgrades, but no one can decide. There's just like, they're at a, a stalemate in terms of some people for different reasons, want to do this and that, and so. Now you've happens. lost everyone. <laughs> Well, Izzy on the show has to pitch it. So that's kind of where I got my, I was like, oh, you know, the first episode where she's selling it. So then I'm like, okay, yeah, I kind of get it because you're a good salesperson. <laughs> I know. I just sell ice to an Eskimo. <laughs> um, was there anything that you, like, learned from about the Miami, well, you're from Miami, but was there anything you guys learned about, like, the Miami tech scene? I think it's, I, I was going to get to that next. Even the good get dirty. <laughs> <laughs> I learned that. Uh, <laughs> Was there stuff that you learned about, like the city that you didn't know before? And like, the, it's interesting that it's set there because I didn't. I mean, it's kind of naive of me, but I didn't realize like how big tech or how it was booming there, just as much as it is here and in Silicon Valley. So it was kind of, it was cool to see it portrayed um, in the show. Well, yeah, as you know, we didn't shoot in Miami. We shot in Puerto Rico. But um, one of the things that I I, I learned about Miami that I didn't know, and you guys are going to hear it in upcoming episodes, is how big financial crime is in Miami and how, uh, as a criminal, you can hide your money in real estate and the government can't touch it. That's something that was fascinating, which is a great place to set our story in. Yeah. I think there's a lot of reasons to set it in Miami with the cultural diversity and financial crime. That's why there's so many criminals in Miami. Um, what did you, what did, why do you think Miami is a good setting for this show? Because, it, like, why not? Why is it, I, I mean, I thought it was so cool that Ben chose to set it there instead of Silicon Valley because it's so different than... The butts. The butts? <laughs> the butts? No, I don't know. 
Um, I was gonna, I was gonna say. Uh, <laughs> Uh, no one agrees uh, with you, apparently. Um, <laughs> I think it's a micro... I mean, I think this is about global fi finance, and I think Miami having so many immigrants in different cultures, I think it's sort of a microcosm of the world, as good a one as you can find mm -hmm. in America. And so I think because of that, personally. And also, uh, what, I, what I think our show is, I mean, I think, I think what's driving it is the cryptocurrency you know, effort that we're all engaged in, but really, this is a show about the people. You know, in our relationships and what we're trying to get out of life and what we're, how we're trying to get out of our situations. Um, and that, to me, is the most exciting thing about what we're watching. I think that that other stuff that I did not study about uh, is, is just the way in which we get into the story and tell the story. Agreed. And I feel like they've never, they've never portrayed Miami the way that they're doing on this show. Me being from there, born and raised, feel like whenever they do portray Miami, they're highlighting the women, the butts, um, Ocean Drive. You don't see how many immigrant families there is, how many people start really trying to start a company, migrating to Miami. I mean, there's so much diversity, so much culture, and they don't ever really show that. The Haitians, the Cubans. The bankers. Regular Americans. <laughs> just kidding. South <laughs> the South Beaches. Um, <laughs> I think you guys can tell, but it gets even better as the show goes on. But another great thing is the cast dynamic. I feel it's like a really fun group. And you guys, I mean, you get to work with Martin. All of you said Martin. Which, by the way, apparently it's his birthday today. I saw yes. that. Yeah. Happy birthday, Martin. Yeah, I saw that. He's not going to say uh, Crackle tweeted a picture of him with a cake. And he looks very, like... Menacing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> must have that cake. Um, what was it like working... I mean, you're going to... You, I'm sure it's all nice things, but what was it like working with each other and with Martin? I, I saw a lot of, I mean, a, a lot of comments on like all the trailers and stuff like, Martin's American accent is amazing. Martin is very sexy. <laughs> the guy has a better He's American accent than uh, me, who was born and raised in the United States. They're fine. They're good. They're fantastic. But uh, we have so many amazing like guest stars, like the the, the actors who aren't series regulars. They're just bringing such talent. There's like not a weak link among the entire cast. Uh, and you're gonna see some terrific performances coming up from them. Yeah. Um, so I think that the casting just knocked it out of the park. They, they hired yeah. just tons of great talent that knew how to feed off of each other and bounce off of each other. It's probably the thing I'm most proud of yeah. is, is and, and yes, ev everyone, I like this. And I mean, everyone, but, but I mean, I, I really do feel like Oh man, we gelled so well, and we're all so equally weighted and coming from different places, but have so much in common at the same time. And it feels, it, it, you know, you can certainly tell as an actor, and, and it, to me, felt special from right away. And so, and even more so as it went along. So, honestly, yeah, I mean, if I'm proud of anything, I, I'm, I'm proud of the cast and the sort of the the chemistry. Martin, everything you th thought he would be in more. <laughs> more. More. More, yeah. More. Um, the guy is funny. He's great. Yeah, he was, um, he, I mean, I mean, I wish we had more scenes with him, quite honestly, but um, um, he, more than any dramatic, I mean, you know, he is a comedic actor as well, but in this, you know, is more dramatic. And more than any actor I've ever worked with in a drama, um, I've never seen someone try it so many ways, you know? I mean, it was really fun, and it was really, uh, he really kept you on your toes, and he delighted in it, you know, tr doing doing it different and trying everything. It was, I found it really inspiring, and I was like, yeah, Adam, you idiot, try different things. Like, you don't have to, like, <laughs> perfect your one idea. Just, like, <laughs> cast a wider net. And, um, you know, that scene that we have in the first episode was so fun to do because... Like a third, a, was thir amazing. a third of that's, that a third so of that's improv just because he's like, you know, he's just asking me different things or, you know what I mean? Or, or, or he's in your office. yeah, yeah. Or, or, or not letting me off the hook for innocuous things I say. And then he's taking it upon himself, not, you know, on the script, but by himself to make that, a you know, to sort of hang me out to dry on certain things. So, so, um, <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, it was a thrill, actually. Was, yeah, yeah. That chemistry was fantastic between the two of you guys in that scene. It was. You could feel that tension when he was asking you about fishing. <laughs> it's not I just about feel, fishing. I could feel your sweaty yeah, exactly. palms. Yeah. Uh, you were shitting yourself. 
Yeah. Like in a real way. You, did you have to go there. You have to Honestly, go there. But like, wouldn't you in real life if someone was? Yeah, I mean. Yeah. Like, yes, I really like, tried in that scene to go. This could be really funny, but don't do that. Like, <laughs> try and it'll be funny enough if you just try and. Good choice. Your, Good actor. Your, you know, uh, uh, that was my that was my real my only real note to myself on this was like <laughs> it's a drama just don't you know just try and be serious um, I feel like your character definitely had the, some comedic moments though too I, d I do I do but 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 you know I think most of those I'm sure I slipped up a few times but by and large I feel like those are could be true to life comedic moments, not so much going for a gag or whatever. I think, you know, um, certainly I'm the straight man getting squeezed. And I, I think really like the way Ben writes, my character, my personality tended to come out even just on the page more when the pressure was on, you know, all of a sudden then it's like, it kind of comes alive as a, as a nervous wreck. Um, and lastly, my last question, and then we'll get to everyone in the audience's questions, but um, what was it like for you guys, I mean, you touched on it, Eddie, but working with Crackle, which, you know, not many, you know, people necessarily knew about, you know, but they're definitely, like, breaking out with a lot more stuff that they, you know, are this kind of stuff, and obviously they have comedians in cars, driving in cars with coffee, I think that's the title, yeah. okay, Jerry, <laughs> which you guys should, you, what if he brought you guys on? <laughs> Yeah, cross I'm saying. Criminals in yeah. cars <laughs> loading weapons. Crackle's like is relatively new in terms of um, original programming. They're they're younger with that, uh, so they don't they're not holding on to the reins as tightly. So you, there's a definite sense of freedom on set. You're not getting noted to death. They're not coming in and saying what you can and can't do except for the f word, and then apparently they let us say it. So <laughs> I was just suppressing it, and I wanted to say it so many One times. One per episode. <laughs> But by and large, you definitely feel like there's more time and room to play as opposed to being on like a network show or something where you just you feel constricted and you have to there's a pace, you have to get the line out and you can't really make choices because they're just oh, I mean, on. yeah, I mean this these don't even have like a definitive running time like at all. Each one is like slightly different. So you get to let moments play out and see what happens and that's real life and that's what I'm kind of fascinated by. So working for Crackle on my end as an actor was fantastic creatively. <laughs> yeah. Eddie said it all. <laughs> cool. Well, we're going to move on to these this awesome. Is, I just want to add this is SAG screening, so how many actors are actually here? Oh, yeah. Wow. Oh, my God. Most of Megan. That's awesome. Yeah. That's fantastic. Everyone but me. <laughs> um, which is why I'm probably. Are you SAG at least? <laughs> Get out of here. <laughs> I don't belong here. <laughs> You're not one, she's not one of us. <laughs> you know what? I have these cool cards that say SAG Foundation on them, so maybe for maybe just for tonight. <laughs> Should we taft heartlier, guys? <laughs> um, also, sorry, I hope I don't butcher anyone's names, but okay, so Jessica Bryden, um, it, this is for all of you. What did you find the most difficult to understand about your character? Oh. Cryptocurrency? I'll just go real fast what you guys think. Uh, uh, for me, it was Ben and I had a constant struggle because I felt like my character um, talked about doing good a lot, but I saw, I saw scant evidence of it. And, you know, I was like, how altruistic is he? <laughs> or like, <laughs> how delusional, you know what I mean? Or uh, how much of a hypocrite is he? And, and that's okay because that's interesting and that's real and, you know, to me, a character is as good as he is interesting, not as good as he is um, moral, morally uh, uh, upstanding. So, um, you know, I think we settled on kind of a bit of both. But um, that was a constant thing of me of where's this evidence of him having tried to change the world? Because, you know, at first blush, I see a lot of similarities to his dad, even though he's not maybe doing all legal activity yet, but he's not. He's not in Haiti giving out shoes either and water, you know? And so, um, yeah, so, so, so that was kind of a, a, a constant conversation. I think mine was probably knowing when to put my wall down because she's so tough. And it was like certain times he'll be like, okay, I think you can care. I think you could be nice in this part. 
Probably that was. Like care more. Yeah, of, just about show a little more affection and not be so. She she does care so much and it, she has such a big heart, but she's that kind of person that just refuses to show it, and she's so tough and she's so tunnel vision, and I think that affects her personality with her family and the people that she does care about but they're just in her way mm -hmm. so i think that was my thing kind of figuring out when it was okay to put the wall down what was the most difficult thing about the character about playing the character about what's the question come on eddie just answer just the most difficult question. thing to understand about your character understand about yeah. the character i don't know, i understood, i felt like i understood my character i thought that it was painted the brush strokes were well defined you know he's a father he says a father businessman um maybe i'm an imaginative actor you know like i think if i had a an issue with myself in trying to try this character on my skin it would be the fact that i don't have kids and now all of a sudden i got two kids and one of them is 15. now if i'm being honest that's possible but <laughs> i'm not gonna say that uh <laughs> And the actor playing my son is actually 21, which fucks with your head, because you're like, you're a fucking grown ass man and son, <laughs> right? So that was, pro that was a little bit difficult, but I'm, I'm an imaginative actor, so like, I'm also not a ganger, a gangbanger. I also don't kill people, right? But I do that on the show and other shows. Um, so I, I've tried that method thing, and it doesn't work for me. You know, when you're at craft services. Just be like, just like son, like, the, like, like, like <laughs> character when you're getting, you know, right. a bagel and you're trying to Daniel Day-Lewis that shit, I always feel stupid. I can't keep, I can't keep that up sure, all sure, day long. Sure. Martin Freeman does the American accent well, all day long. Well, yeah. And, uh, and, but he's not, but he's not, in fairness, he's not Agent Rask at the craft service. That's true. <laughs> he's true. not. But it's the American accent, and I, maybe, I don't know. Can you imagine? To me, it's just like, I feel like silly trying to keep this thing up, because I'm acting on camera. So if I'm doing that at the craft service table, like, now I'm just acting all over the place. Right. I know. Just for me, personally. I can't do it. I gotta, I gotta imagine. So you didn't give, what was the kid's name that played your son? Kelvin. 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 Yeah. Kelvin? Kelvin. Kelvin. Kelvin, yeah. I give him real life pep talks. great. Yeah, I was gonna say, Actually, you didn't I give him any did. father. Yeah, he kinda did. Yeah, you did. Yeah. yeah, in the Why corner. Yeah. Yeah. what you tell your 21 year old yeah. son. <laughs> father advice for the agent. Yeah, yeah, for the. Yeah. So yeah, I guess that would be the most difficult thing is wrapping my head around having children and what that means and uh, looking this guy in the face, this guy, yeah. this young actor, yeah. and endowing him with all the love and uh, yeah. desire. You could be to a grandfather on the show soon. You know what? <laughs> yeah, I can imagine that. Um, this is a question from no one, blank, and for anyone. So it's very open. -ended. Just think about that for a while. <laughs> so, for actors who are lesser known, what does it take to have a chance to be considered for a series regular? Oh, that's Just for a good me. One. Yeah. You answer. It's for the D lister. Uh, <laughs> listen, I auditioned for this job like nine times. I didn't say anything. I believe you. <laughs> uh, my last audition was actually a chemistry read with Adam, which yeah. I didn't recognize, and I went in the room, and I was having like issues that day, and I started telling him all my problems. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, so are you familiar with the script? He was like, no, I haven't even read it. I'm like, what? I mean, I read, I'm just like, I, had, I don't know the lines, really, I was gonna read. I was like, I read the script, but I'm like, yeah, I'm not off book, I'm gonna. I was like, well, what do you mean you're not off book? And, and you're like, like, do you do that? Is that how you do that? <laughs> <laughs> do you just? <laughs> He's like, oh, I got the job already. I was like, damn. <laughs> Mind you, I didn't, I didn't even recognize him because I was like so in my head with everything that was going on. But man, you just, the work is worth it. You just got to put in the work. And I mean, there's fortunately, I, I came to LA and, and two months later, I'm the lead on a show. But I feel like there's people that spend 10 years here before they get their big break. And you just have to know that if this is what you truly want to do, you have to put in the work and just know that this career is forever, pretty much. There's no time limit. You know, nobody's going to tell you, okay, you're too fat now. You can't act anymore. So it's just a matter of putting in the work and, and having faith. I think that's, I don't know if you guys are religious or not, but. Well, thank you guys. I think we're out of time. I got the. 
cut off notification. Um, but yeah, go home and watch it. Finish it. Binge it. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks for coming.